reality of this war is that Russia is fighting the entire Western world. That is the reality. Many African countries quietly actually support Russia. And they support Russia out of historical reasons that at critical moments during the struggle for independence, it is the Russians who came out to support those who are fighting for independence. The Russians who are present in Congo, the Russians who are present during the struggle in South Africa, the Russians who are present in Mozambique, the Russians who are present in Angola, the Russians who are present in Guinea-Bissau, and therefore sentimentally Africans support Russia. But no matter who we support, my own view is that war has no eyes. The net effect is that those who are not responsible for the war end up suffering. And I hope that this war, once it's settled, will send a clear message also to the Western world that their hegemonic approach to world affairs must come to an end. And that the era of unilateralism and manipulation of multilateral institutions must stop and the approach to world affairs must be collegiate through the UN. If they don't do that, then the Western world will find itself in a very difficult position and the only thing that will protect them from the rest of the world is that they have nuclear weapons which they can unleash upon the rest of the world. And the writing is on the wall. If you look at the world today, and the, the dollar has been the dominant currency in the world, and, and, and the, dollar, the, the dollar's dominance came about in the 1960s, 1970s, perhaps a little earlier. But the dollar became the hegemonic currency when they entered into an arrangement with the Saudis and we then gave the world, or they gave the world, the term petrodollar. So that what then started happening is that the dollar was no longer backed by any gold. The dollar became a fiat currency during the Nixonian era. Or oh, I'm saying era and era at the same time. It was an era and an era at the same time. And almost all transactions in the world are terminated in the dollar. And they have used the dollar as an instrument of political and economic control. And that is coupled with the use of institutions such as the IMF and the World Bank. And you remember the World Bank and the IMF were created in Bretton Woods in New Hampshire in the United States in 1944. By American economists and British economists at that time, as a way of finding funds and deploying funds for the rebuilding of Europe after the World War II. But when African countries became independent, we also found ourselves in that space. So when you hear people saying we want to de-dollarize, they are actually saying we want total independence. And total independence means economic emancipation. People are saying, we have been manipulated for too long. We've been controlled for too long. The Americans can print dollars and deploy them anywhere in the world. And it is suggested that nearly 40% of the American dollars is actually circulating outside of the United States of America. So that even when America says that they are the most heavily indebted nation on earth, they are not. In fact, they can just print dollars and pay their debts. So this is a cry by the world that we want change, that freedom must mean that we are capable of trading at levels which are equal, that we can run our affairs without being dictated to. As I speak to you now, if you are in Nwakchat in Mauritania and you want to send money to somebody in Abidjan in La Côte d'Ivoire, the correspondent bank will be in the United States of America or in Paris. 
how can that be allowed to happen and then we talk about the sovereignty of the nation i hear that cry and i too am a warrior in that struggle the warrior to de-dollarize and have a completely reconfigured architecture of the world economy and that is why BRICS, which is now bringing together new countries that are emerging out of the domination of the united states of america is beginning to make sense china is in that arrangement india is in that arrangement brazil is in that arrangement russia is in that arrangement south africa is in that arrangement and let me tell you in the next few years you will see many countries coming into that arrangement with the sole purpose of ensuring that the, their economies are de-dollarized and I want to say part of the reason why you see our economies cannot grow as well and as robustly as they should is because they are shadow economies being controlled like marionettes from Washington, London, Paris, Brussels and those Western countries. Uh, the conflicts that we see, particularly the Russia-Ukraine war, if not stopped, has the potential of spreading to the rest of the world. Remember that the combatants in this particular war are Western European countries and Russia. And all these countries have military bases in the continent of Africa. And if one mistake is made, and it degenerates into a nuclear war, nobody will be spared. And indeed, that is the reason why the African Union and African leaders have now said, we can no longer afford the luxury of, uh, we can no longer afford the luxury of sitting back, we must come into the front, forefront and send a peace mission. They realize, as we say in Kiswahili, if your neighbor is having a haircut, you must also take water and put it on your hair because it is your hair that is next online. And I hope that the African initiative will succeed because if it does, it will do a number of things. One, it will, number one, demonstrate that Africa is capable of midwifing peace processes Number two, it will be a message to the Western world that they can no longer dictate to the world what the world needs to do. Number three, it will force the international community through the agency of the United Nations organization to renegotiate the character and composition of critical institutions of the UN going forward. Also, as it is now, the UN is a body that functions at the behest of the Western world and others are mere participants playing what sometimes in English may be called the gooseberry as an unwanted third parties in the entire arrangement. That is why you see international institutions such as the ICC uh, institutions that sometimes are deployed to deal with those whom America or the British or Europe do not like to operate in a particular way. So I look forward to the quick end of this war that we start a healing period which is defined by rapprochement.